The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company. Tonight, we have special news for you. Kraft presents a new cheddar cheese. It's called K-Brand Natural. K-Brand is cheddar cheese at its best. Finest quality cheese from the standpoint of both flavor and texture. Listen for the exciting story of K-Brand Natural later in the program. It is written that men of genius have that capacity for losing themselves in their work. At the end of each month, the great Gildersleeve loses himself in the pile of water bills. And helping him get lost is his secretary... Bessie? Bessie, come in here. Did you call me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Your name's Bessie, isn't it? Yes, sir. Oh, then you did call me. (laughs) Bessie, I've been looking high and low for that list of turn-ons. Where is it? Turn-ons? Yes, you made it out this very morning. I did? I'll say one thing for you, Bessie. You've made a place for yourself here in the water department. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. You've misplaced so many reports since you've been here, you've made yourself indispensable. (laughs) Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) Don't mention it. Now think, Bessie. Where is the list of turn-ons? New customers. Oh, new customers. It's right here on your desk, Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) Do you want me to read them? Yes, I'll check. Ready? Go right ahead. I'll start with the A's. Now you're thinking, Bessie. Adkins, James. Adkins, James. Clawson, Henry L. Clawson, Henry L. Dalrymple, Mrs. J.W. Dalrymple, Doris. Doris? Doris? Oh, did I say Doris? Yes, sir. That's where we got stopped before. Should I try to call Mrs. Dalrymple again, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, no, Bessie. Probably out joyriding with Judge Hooker while I work. <laughs> Is there something wrong with her statement, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, no, her statement's fine. (laughs) Lovely. (laughs) I'll mail it then with the others. Uh, Mail it? Uh, Wait a minute, Bessie. I may be passing that way, and so I'll drop it by myself, right now, as a service to a new customer. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, isn't that out of your way? Save a stamp, Bessie. Save a stamp. (laughs) And, Bessie, call the florist and have him make up two dozen roses. Yes, sir. To whom should I have the roses sent? I'll pick them up. I'll deliver them myself. To Mrs. Dalrymple? Yeah, to Mrs. Dalrymple. Well, she's a new customer. <laughs> sure is a long way to Mrs. Dalrymple's. She would live over here by the school grounds. And how she stands those noisy kids. Hi, Uncle! Yes. Leroy, hasn't he left for home yet? Hi, Uncle, come for me. I'm just going. Uh, Leroy, put in your shirt tail. But school's out. So's your shirt tail. Put it in. Why well, I have to pull it right out again when I change for dinner. Why well, stick it in one right away? I have to pull it out. Leroy. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm ready. Let's go. She ain't nice here to come so far out of your way just to walk home with me. Uh, well, I have a water bill to deliver, Leroy. Okay, I'll help you. I don't need any help, young man. There's only one bill. See, isn't that Mrs. Dalrymple exercising your dog? Yeah. Let's go deliver the bill, Unc. Uh, the bill happens to be for Mrs. Dalrymple. Oh, I get it. And the flowers happen to be for her dog. <laughs> Leroy, don't try to be smart. It's very unlike you around the schoolhouse. Well, hello, Mrs. Dalrymple. Why, Mr. Gildersleeve and Leroy. Why, I didn't expect to see you here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I didn't expect to see you either. Just on my way home. (laughs) Leroy. (laughs) You may go home now. But, Unc, I want to watch you give her the flowers. Run along, young man, and tell Bertie I'll be right behind you. Okay. Well, Mrs. Dalrymple, isn't this a coincidence? But say, Unc... What is it now, Leroy? You didn't mean what you said this morning, did you? That I have to be in by 9 o'clock tomorrow night? All the kids are going Halloween. Leroy, I gave you my answer. Okay. I uh, think I'll stick around and wait for you then. Oh, isn't that cute? Leroy. (laughs) What about Halloween? Still 9 o'clock? 
o'clock? All right, ten o'clock. Ye gods. Oh, boy, thanks, Unc. Glad I saw you, Mr. Dalrymple. Oh, my, what a spirited young boy. He's charming, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I do get a boot out of Leroy. And he gets a few out of me, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the flowers. Oh, flowers. Yeah, from the water department. Uh, new customer, you know. Oh, they're perfectly lovely, Mr. Gildersleeve. They're just peachy. <laughs> peachy. <laughs> and uh, there's your water bill, too. A water bill? Isn't that cute? Uh, think so? Oh. oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, do you bring flowers to all of your new customers? Uh, well. And deliver all of your water bills in person? Well. Mm. <laughs> uh, care to sit down for a minute on the bench? Oh, I really should be going. Take a load off those dainty little feet. All righty. But uh, what do I do with Duke? Duke? Oh, the dog. Oh, tie him to the flagpole. That'll hold him. Here, I'll do it for you. Yeah, nice, Duke. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you better do it. I'd hate to upset him. Well, I'll unsnap his leash and let him romp. He won't go far unless he sees a cat or something. There you are, Duke. Big elephant. I hope he flushes a greyhound bus and chases it all the way to Dallas. Oh. <laughs> uh. What was that, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, oh, I said I had a greyhound once, name of Alice. <laughs> yeah, look at him romp off. Uh, frisky. Must be the weather. Nothing like autumn air. <sighs> oh, I love the fall season. And it's especially nice here in Summerfield. Uh, you'll get to like it even better. Yes, sir. Just look at those trees. Wonderful time of the year. See. Tomorrow's Halloween. Let's have a little party at your house. Too many people at mine. A Halloween party? Sure. Bob for apples, toast marshmallows. I'll get candy, pumpkins, noisemakers. Why, that's a marvelous idea. Oh, but Mr. Gildersleeve, hmm. I don't know anybody in Summerfield. I-, I wouldn't know who to invite. You know me. All right. You're invited. I am. I'll be expecting you early. Well, I'd better go get the dew. Yeah, ta-ta, Mrs. Dalrymple. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> well, a cozy little Halloween, just for two. Tea for two and two for tea. Good morning, Bertie. Good morning. Morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Coming with the coffee. Mmm, smells good, Bertie. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, Chief of Police Mr. Gates called up this morning early. Oh? Well, what did he say? Nothing the first time. When I heard it was the police, I hung up. You hung up? <laughs> well, why'd you do that? I don't know. I guess I've been going to too many gangster pictures. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'd better call him. Oh, he called back. He said to remind you of the annual Jolly Boys Halloween party tonight. Oh, by George, I forgot that, Bertie. Well, if he calls again, tell him I have a little party of my own. With a little party. <laughs> yes, sir. And when you go to the market, Bertie, remember to pick up two pumpkins for me, will you? I'll try to remember, Mr. Gilsey. Two pumpkins. Yeah. But everybody else around here has asked me to remember things, too. I know, Bertie, but this is very... Miss Marjorie wants Bertie to remember the, uh, the Halloween candy, and Leroy wants Bertie to remember his teacher's birthday, and the city wants Bertie to remember to put out the cans. And... All right, Bertie. But I'll try. There's one thing you got to say for Bertie. She tries to remember. <laughs> and now what will be for you, sir? Two pumpkins. Those two funny hats. She'd like the one with the feather. Give me two apples, Joe, that float. Give me two horns. Peavy, give me two cigars. Your uh, usual brand, Mr. (laughs) Gildersleeve? Say, Peavy, I see you have Halloween masks. Let me have a couple of them. One for me and one for a, a lady. Well, well, Mr. Gildersleeve, we have quite a selection. What kind did you have in mind? Well, 
I don't know. I... Well, now, here's one that covers the whole face. I'm taking one of those home for Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> We also have them with funny black mustaches. Yeah, no thanks, Peavy. And then we have the type that just covers the eyes. Oh, fine, fine. Give me two of those, Peavy. Come to think of it, you better have the lips free. <laughs> We're bobbing for apples, Peavy. What's mm-hmm. wrong with that? Oh, nothing, Mr. Gildersleeve. Do you uh, care to try on some of the masks? Yeah, just give me two, Peavy. Any two. And I'll reach two of these El Lobo cigars you have on the counter here. The El Lobo? Well, I spent a lot of money today, Peavy. Yeah. A little black, but they look fresh. Well, the customer's always right, Mr. Gildersleeve. El Lobo as it is. That'll be uh, 50 cents for the masks and 8 cents for the two cigars. Yeah, <laughs> uh, A.R. Peavy, 58. Yeah. I think I'll light one. I guess the boys will be out raising old Ned tonight. Had quite a nice run on soap today. Oh, uh-huh. well... I soaked my share when I was a kid. But tonight I'm looking forward to a quiet, cozy Halloween. Uh, well, cigar went out, Peavy. <laughs> Don't tell Lobo smoke up a lot of matches. <laughs> yes, sir, Peavy. I'm really looking forward to this evening with a charming little lady. Halloween for two. Ta-da, da uh, Peavy, we're going to have a wonderful time. Oh, I'm sure we will. Yes, that is. Yes. Huh? Uh, Mrs. Peavy and I may be a little late, have to close up, you know, but... What? We'll join in in the spirit of things when we get there. Get where, Peavy? To Mrs. Dalrymple's party. Mrs. Dalrymple? She isn't having a party. Nobody else has been invited, just me. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> According to Judge Hooker, there's going to be quite a gathering. Hooker? The Jolly Boys, Mayor Terwilliger. That old goat, what does he have to do with this? I don't know, Mr. Gildersleeve. All I know is that when I get a chance to get out of the house with Mrs. Peavy on Halloween, I take it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I hope you'll all have a happy Halloween, Peavy. Goodbye. <coughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, is something wrong? <coughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. That's peculiar. First he turned pale and then pink. I didn't think those El Lobos were that bad. (laughs) Do you like natural cheese, especially a mellow, rich-flavored cheddar? Well, then, here's news to make your mouth water. Kraft experts now can give you a natural cheddar cheese with uniform fine flavor and texture and made from pasteurized milk. It's called K-Brand Natural. That's K-A-Y brand natural. Just think of the mellow goodness of natural golden cheddar, but made from milk pasteurized as carefully as the milk your children drink. Excuse me, but I don't quite understand. You mean all the milk in K-Brand cheese is pasteurized? Absolutely. Every drop is wholesome pasteurized milk. K-Brand is aged differently, too. Natural cheese ordinarily is cured in cheesecloth and forms a rind. But each big 10-pound bar of K-Brand has no rind because it ages in its own transparent wrapper. And it comes to your dealers with all its golden goodness still protected by this spick and span wrapper. How do I buy K-Brand Natural? Your dealer will cut as much as you wish. A portion, thick slices, or a wedge. You'll use it in sandwiches and on your cheese tray. I'd better get enough. My family will love it for snacks, and with pie, too. Tomorrow, folks, when you shop, look for the big golden bar with K-Brand Natural. K-Brand Natural down the top and sides. It's the wonderful new natural cheddar made from pasteurized milk. Now it's late afternoon, and if we hurry, we can catch the great Gildersleeve as he pulls up in front of his house. His car, like Noah's Ark, loaded with two of everything. And he, like Noah, very much at sea. Fine friend Hooker turned out to be, inviting everybody to my party. Oop. What's his car doing in front of my house? Well, this is one time I'm glad my brakes aren't too good. Well, my brakes were even worse than I thought. <laughs> yeah, that'll teach him. What was that? 
I hope it was Booker's muffler. Hmm, my license plate. <laughs> oh, well, it was nearly a year old anyway. What's the matter, Gildersleeve? Don't you know how to park a car? You're the one who doesn't know how to park, Booker, right next to a fire plug. I didn't park next to the fire plug. Well, you're next to it now. <laughs> <laughs> A little early for Halloween pranks, isn't it, Gildersleeve? You started them, Hooker. You've got a lot of nerve coming over to my house after what you did. Get off the property. Now, Gildy, I'm Mrs. Dalrymple's legal advisor. She decides to give a party, so I help her. And if I do say so, it's a very carefully prepared guest list. The jolly boys. We were going to have a party anyway, and Floyd and Mrs. Munson are always good for laughs. Ye gods, Hooker, not lovey Munson. Mrs. Munson has a heart of gold. And I invited Mayor Terwilliger for dignity. It's time Mrs. Dalrymple met some of the important people of Summerfield. I don't suppose I'm important. I didn't say you weren't, but she's met you. Not afraid of a little competition, are you, Gildy? <laughs> Go move your car before I call the police, Hooker. Well, if you're going to be stubborn, I'll run along and get you to the party. By the way, Gildy. Yes? I left your invitation on the mantle. <laughs> oh, haunt a house, Hooker. Didn't even offer to have me take these things inside. Oh, darn pumpkins. Seem a lot heavier than when I bought them. Hope I step on one of Leroy's roller skates and break the whole shebang. Here, let me help you. Hello, Marjorie. Thank you, my dear. I'll take the horns. Looks like your party's going to be fun. I don't know. I may not even go. What's wrong, Uncle Moore? Who wants to go to a party with people there? <laughs> Anki, don't be silly. I have 20 kids coming over here. What's a party without a big crowd? Well, this is one time I don't want to be crowded. By George, I don't think I'll go. Oh, go ahead, Anki. You have a good time. I refuse to have a good time. I'll stay home. But, Uncle Mort, you won't have any fun here. Kids will be all over the house. I won't be in their way. I'll go upstairs and spend Halloween in my room. Leroy will let me use his little radio. Probably. Poor old Anki. That's all right. Mrs. Dalrymple wants a lot of people around her. Why should I care? But I don't want to be there. Oh, I'll get it. That must be Francie calling about the favors. You can have the favors I bought. <laughs> Whole day shot. I'd have had more fun down at the office working. I wouldn't be nearly so tired. Seemed to tire more easily since my birthday last week. <laughs> Read an ad someplace that said I would. Somebody get the telephone? Oh, good evening, Miss Gill, please. I didn't know you were home. Yes, Bertie. Yipe! <laughs> Bertie, why are you wearing that witch's hat? You should have warned me. Sorry, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'm just in the process of dressing for a party in the church basement. I'm going as a witch. Huh? Taking the bus or going to fly? <laughs> <laughs> me fly, Mr. Gillsleeve? Don't expect too much of Halloween. <laughs> Stop in the nice box, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'm off. Yeah, go have your fun while you're young, Bertie. And don't ring too many doorbells. No, sir. Won't catch me ringing no doorbells. My girlfriend met a fella at a party, and they went out ringing doorbells and ended up ringing wedding bells. <laughs> what you going to do at your party, Miss Gilson? Uh, my party? Well, I've just about given up the idea, but... Uh, yes, sir? By George Birdie, you know what? I think we'll go out ringing doorbells. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to bob for apples next? Mrs. Munson? Sure, might as well, Judge. My makeup's coming off anyway. <laughs> what a silly game. Hey, I got a wonderful idea, folks. Let's all go out and ring doorbells. Quiet! Can't you see a lady bobbing for apples? Well, here goes. Whooper, whooper, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Mrs. Munson. Uh, what do you know? Lovey, come up with an apple. Her and her big mouth. Oh, you were wonderful, Mrs. Munson. Ah, oh, thanks, Mrs. Dalrymple. You throw swell parties, honey. Everybody's Bob but you, Phoebe. Better join in the fun. Oh, I don't think I should, Judge. I didn't bring along my earplugs. <laughs> 
Well, what do we play now? Hey, why don't we go out and ring doorbells? Huh? Look at Lovey, look at Lovey. She should have worn a bathing suit. She bobbed so deep she's got water on the knee. <laughs> Hey, P, where's the missus? She come, didn't she? Oh, yeah, she's in the other room watching the aquarium. Mrs. Peavy likes goldfish. She's not bobbing for him, is she? <laughs> Only kidding, P. Well, what will we play now? Quiet, Chief. Hey, everybody, I've got a wonderful idea. Why don't we all go out and ring doorbells? What's the matter? Come here, she ain't having any fun. Hey, who brought the two horns? Mr. Gildersleeve, I believe. The party's on him. <laughs> You'll see, you old goat. Oh, come on, Floydy. Let's play a duet. Oh, do let's have some music. Mr. Gildersleeve, you sing, don't you? Well, yes, I do, Mrs. Dalrymple. Uh, what would you like to hear? Well, I'd like to hear the chief sing. <laughs> he has a deep voice. Now, Mrs. Munson. Oh, 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 oh. oh brother. <laughs> come on, Chiefy. Over by the plant. But I'm strictly a quartet man. Uh, come on, jolly boys. I need a little help. What about going out and ringing doorbells? Now, we're singing, Commander. Huh? Okay, well, it'll be, fellas. There is a tavern in the town. Easy, easy. Uh -huh. Remember where we are. Uh, oh, pardon me. Yeah. How about it's always fair weather, gentlemen? We do that well. Yeah, here we go. Now you take the solo, Chief, just like down at the club. Uh, Come on, join in, Commander. Well, if I'm not intruding at my own party. All together. Oh, it's always fair weather when good brothers get together with a sign. Our apologies, Mrs. Dalrymple. On the table and the song ringing clear. Good song ringing clear. <laughs> oh. Well, I wasn't bad, not bad, Chief. Well, what will we play now? I have a wonderful little suggestion. Listen, everybody. Hey, I just got another great idea. Quiet, everybody. Mrs. Munson has an idea. Yeah. Why don't we all go out and ring doorbells? <laughs> why didn't we think of that before? Yeah, why didn't we think of that before? It's a great idea, lovey. Well, let's go ring doorbells, everybody. Great idea, Mrs. Munson. Sorry I didn't think of it. Great, great. But, fellas, I can't go ringing doorbells. You forgot my position. I'm chief of police. Isn't that cute? Ah, yeah. oh, come on, Chief. Come on, I got a reputation to uphold, too. Let's all pair up, two by two. Come along, Mrs. Dalry. But fellas. Come on, Phoebe, let's go ring the school bell. Well, uh, you ring, and uh, Mrs. Phoebe and I'll just listen. <laughs> Great. We'll go the other way. Come on, Mrs. Dalrymple. Well, all righty. Just a minute, Gildy. Don't go sneaking off without me. I feel personally responsible for the safety of our charming hostess this evening. Isn't that cute? Well, then, come on, you old goat. <laughs> hey, there's a light in that window. Go ahead, Judge. Ring the doorbell. We'll get ready to run. Why should I go up and ring it, Gildy? Why don't you? You're faster on your feet than I am, Judge. Remember? You're thinner. Go ahead. Well, I'm not afraid either. Come on, Mrs. Dalrymple. We'd better get a head start. But what about the judge? The judge? Oh, he'll find us. He has the nose of a bloodhound. <laughs> Let's duck behind this hedge. We'll go up through this alley. I know a doorbell we could ring. But, but Mr. Gildersleeve, what about the judge? Huh? Isn't he right behind us? Well, he got lost, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I think you did that on purpose. No. Oh, here's the house. Let's sneak around the side, huh? But it's so dark. Yeah, it is. I'd better take your hand. Oh, gloves. <laughs> well, follow me. Hurry up on the porch. Watch your step. There. Now, why don't you ring? All righty. Mr. Gildersleeve, we don't want to ring this bell. This is my house. It is? <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'd better ring the bell, huh? You get inside and answer the door. 
trick or treat. Oh, oh, you are fun. On second thought, I think I'll come in with you a little chilly out here. <laughs> well, Mrs. Dalrymple? Yes? Trick or treat? How about a kiss? Uh, don't you think we'd better turn on the lights? Lights? Huh? Well, let's go in the living room. Plenty of light from the fireplace. We'll wait for the others. Sit down, Mrs. Dalrymple. Yeah. Doris. Doris. Isn't that cute? <laughs> uh, care to take off your gloves? All righty. Hi, George, Doris. I didn't think I was going to have any fun tonight. All those people here. But now I'm having a wonderful time. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm glad you are, Mr. Gildersleeve, because I'm having a wonderful time, too. You are? Doris. Yes. It's Halloween. I know, but... Trick or treat. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Uh, what was that? Does your dog snore? He does, but he's not here. He's over at my mother's house tonight with Baby. Uh, stand back. I'll strike a match. It's Chief Gates. Uh, 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 oh, oh, you're back. Well, good. What do we play now? Isn't that cute? Oh! <laughs> Good morning, Bessie. Well, glad to see you here on time. Did you have a nice Halloween, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, rather disappointing, Bessie. Did you have a good time? Oh, I stayed home. And people were ringing our doorbell all night. Father got awfully mad. Yes, yes. He went upstairs and dumped a bucket of water on one of them. Oh? And when he saw who it was, he threw the bucket at him. He did? Well, who was it? Judge Hooker. <laughs> well, it wasn't such a bad Halloween after all. <laughs> but Bessie... Tell your father not to dump any more water out the window, because I may be ringing his doorbell tonight. Really? But, Mr. Gildersleeve, Halloween's over. For the community chest. Oh, father has a check all ready for you. Yeah, fine, Bessie. Folks, when a volunteer worker from the community chest rings your doorbell, don't give him a big argument. Give him a big check. The more you give, the better you'll feel. Good night. I gotta go ring doorbells. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, William Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Me too. Good night. Tomorrow night, William Bendix will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall heard over this NBC station. Don't miss this great pair. Remember, tomorrow night, for exact time, see your local paper. And listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Do the folks at your house like their macaroni and cheese fluffy light with cheddar cheese goodness through and through? Well, let me tell you how to cook that splendid dish in just seven minutes. Ask your grocer for a box of Kraft Dinner. In that package you'll find a special macaroni that cooks fluffy light in just seven minutes. Also, craft grated to add that delicious cheddar cheese flavor. Seven minutes, and you have a delicious main dish. If you wish, add a little leftover meat or chicken or vegetables. The fam family will probably say it's the best macaroni and cheese they've ever tasted. Remember the name, Kraft Dinner. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.